Boris Dorfman here with LBC Capital Income Fund. Uh, and it's gonna be an interesting year. I mean, if you analyze it, uh, there's nothing good that uh, will come out of it, but we'll stay optimistic. Uh, geopolitics, elections, uh, you know, it's gonna be a very tumultuous year. And, you know, the big question for everybody is uh, economy and inflation, 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 inflation. Every four years we have election. Uh, that's what separates us from many other countries in this world. Uh, Trump's first speech when elected president started with every four years at this exact spot, uh, we have a new president, we have continuity of power. And every election is usually dominated by single issue, single voter issue. So we had uh, one election was dominated by immigration, we had civil rights, we had uh, women's rights, gay rights, uh, economy, every few election cycles, it's about economy. When the economy is good, you know, you praise the uh, sitting president and uh, you want the economy to continue to be good. When economy is not good, people vote with their vo wallet. So this is one of those years where economy is good, but people feel miserable. And part of the reason economy is good is because uh, this administration printed to the tune of $11 trillion or I, I lost uh, count, right? So this election cycle is gonna be dominated by the economy, uh, most importantly by the inflation. So I want to quickly, I mean, that was a preamble, but where we are today and where are we going? So uh, economy is great, okay? There is talk about recession and, uh, you know, uh, everybody's underestimated the amount of money that was printed and how this would affect the economy. No economist, nobody thought that Fed will raise the federal funds rate by 5% and all the restaurants, Vegas and Disneyland's are gonna be full. Uh, people expected a big shock in the economy. They talked about uh, recession, mild or strong. Uh, uh, there was a lot of talk about soft lending. So in reality, you print so much money. If people spend that money, the economy is gonna be strong. And that's where we at today. There is a lot of forces that may take us down, but we emerged from COVID pandemic, uh, uh, partially thanks to this uh, exuberant printing of money unscattered. Uh, and then it created a different problem, inflation. And we are today in a great economy and uh, in a short run, in a long run, somebody is gonna have to pay for all this uh, nonsense that's going on, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, look around you economy is doing great uh, and the fear of inflation and uh, markets are driven by expectation not what's actually happening right so inflation is high right? and people stop spending money and then all of a sudden say hey we expect the Fed to drop rate and inflation is kind of leveling off and the uh, Fed is gonna start dropping cutting rates in 2024 so Actually, Fed statement comes out this week and I'm gonna do a follow-up video. But last one, uh, based on the rhetoric, people expect three to six uh, interest rate, a quarter point interest rate uh, cuts uh, in 2024. So at least three would do a great things uh, for stabilizing the economy. But this is such an unpredictable year with the transition of power in the White House, with uh, amazing destabilization in the world, geopolitics, all these wars that are happening. I mean, you haven't had this since World War II. So there's still a lot of uncertainty. Uh, my take is this, inflation is leveling off significantly, okay? If you change the way Fed calculates it, you do, uh, the Fed goes back 12 months, right? So they take 
uh, January 2024, they take uh, February 2023, and all the months in between, they average it. But we see the trend. So if you take the trend for the, for the from the last six months, last three months, uh, and annualize it, we'd get we'd hit that two percent uh, magic number that the Fed is talking about. Okay, uh, so. Uh, we are under 3% on PCE, that's the favorite measure of inflation for, for the Fed. So inflation is leveling off. The Fed should cut rates in 2024 multiple times. Uh, also what's happening with all this instability around the world, there is flight to safety. And when there is flight to safety, people do invest in the United States. I mean. Most of the money in the world is invested here. There's only so much you can put uh, in UK, in Europe, in the emerging markets, right? Uh, uh, in Middle Eastern oil. But most of the big money, we're talking about pension funds, insurance companies, we're talking about sovereign funds, we're talking about hedge funds, we're talking about big money. We're not talking about, you know, your uncle that has tremendous wealth of $20 million. No, we're talking about billions, if not. Uh, hundreds of billions, trillions of dollars invested. So most of this money is invested in the United States. The more instability in the world, I mean, who wants to invest in China today? And China would take a good 10, 15% of the investment portfolio before, sometimes 20. So uh, wealth managers, hedge fund managers, they're changing strategy. And uh, as all the wealth in the world is coming to United States, it always has been here, but now more so. You know, uh, uh, we had our three of our service members killed in uh, Houthi uh, rebel attack uh, in their base a few days ago. We, uh, Biden said we will retaliate. It creates more instability. Okay, so more instability means more money here. More money here may mean a little bit more inflation. Also, uh, with instability in the Red Sea, some of these shippers have to take a route around Panama Canal, extending the time and increasing uh, the cost of goods. So this may drive the inflation, this may drive supply side inflation higher, right? So we think we're kind of out of the woods and then, oops, it takes you two months uh, and, you know, two zillion tons of uh, fuel longer, more expensive to deliver uh, lumber for construction or shoes to Sport Chalet or Big Five, right? So this may drive uh, inflation uh, higher. Uh, instability in Middle East will drive oil prices up, so this may drive inflation higher. On the other side, shelter costs are leveling off. Used car sales uh, are down, so um, we have a lot of we, we have a lot of forces pulling opposite of each of, of each other. But uh, I think this is going to be a very good year economically, and once the president is elected, uh, we'll see a lot more stability. Okay, I always said that uh, markets react to instability. It's, it, you know, when things are good or bad, you can uh, forecast, you can project, but uh, when you don't know what to expect, and this is where we at, we don't know uh, what, uh, who's gonna be the president, how he's gonna act. Both of these guys are like 100 years old. If, they, if they'll be competent one, one way or another. So, and also political instability. So. Uh, as soon as we get some clarity, we'll uh, have more of a smooth sailing, hopefully. Hopefully some of these conflicts, uh, I'm sorry, some of these wars, uh, all of these wars get resolved sooner rather than later. Uh, thank you guys. Uh, let me know your thoughts. I did not mean to go into politics as much, but uh, my thing, more and more of the same, uh, interest rates are going to be cut. Uh, real estate is going to continue to rise at a slower pace, pace and uh, things are going to be good and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you.